Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about something called the reaction quotient or Q and then we are going to learn how to calculate Q and then we are going to compare Q or the reaction quotient to our equilibrium constant that we learned how to calculate in an earlier video and learn about what that comparison means. So let's first start talking about the reaction quotient. What is the reaction quotient or Q? It says right here that the reaction quotient or Q compares the initial concentrations of the substances in a chemical reaction or equilibrium to the concentrations of the substances once equilibrium has been reached. And the reaction quotient can be used to determine in which direction the chemical reaction will shift in order to reach equilibrium. It says right here that if Q or the reaction quotient is greater than the equilibrium constant, then the reaction favors the reactants and the reaction will shift to the left to reach equilibrium. If the reaction quotient or Q is less than the equilibrium constant, or if Q is less than KEQ, then the reaction favors the products and the reaction will shift to the right to reach equilibrium. And if Q equals KEQ, then the reaction is in equilibrium currently. There is no side that is favored and there is no shift in either direction since the chemical reaction is in equilibrium at that particular given moment. So let's go ahead and apply this concept here. Let's suppose we have a chemical reaction where A is reacting with B to produce C and D over here and we want to figure out Q. We want to know what the reaction quotient for this chemical reaction is going to be. Well to get Q here we take the product of the con initial concentrations of our products, which in this case here we have the concentration of C raised to the C power, whatever this coefficient is. And this not here, this symbol is called not, this means the initial concentration of C raised to the C power times the concentration of D, the initial concentration of D raised to the D power, which would be the coefficient that comes in front of D, divided by the, pro uh, the product of our reactants here, if we, the concentration of our reactants. So we're going to take the concentration of A raised to the A power, where A is the coefficient that comes in front of A, and this again is the initial concentration, times the uh, concentration, initial concentration of B raised to the B power. So to calculate Q, that's how we're going to set this up. And so now what we can do is we can apply this concept of Q to some uh, different chemical reactions and then we can compare our Q value to the equilibrium constant and determine which way the reaction is going to shift in order to uh, achieve equilibrium. So let's go ahead and apply this concept to a problem. In this first example it says the following amounts of each chemical involved in the chemical reaction shown below are found in a 2.50 liter container initially. So initially we have 1.50 moles of A, 2.50 moles of B, and 1.25 moles of C in a 2.50 liter container. Here's our chemical reaction or our chemical equilibrium. A plus B uh, is producing C. However, this is an equilibrium. And we know that the equilibrium constant here is 5.7. So we have to find the reaction quotient Q for the chemical reaction and determine which direction the chemical reaction will shift in order to reach equilibrium. So the very first thing we are going to have to do is find the molarities. Of each of our substances. So let's figure out the molarity or concentration of A. If we read it tells us that we have 1.50 moles of A in a 2.50 liter container. And when we put this in our calculator, we are going to end up with a molarity of 0 0.600 molar. Let's find the concentration of B now. To find the initial concentration of B, these are initial concentrations. Let's see, we have 2.50 moles. 2.50 moles in 2.50 liter container. Put this in our calculator, we'll get 1.00 molar as our initial concentration of B. Let's figure out now the initial concentration of C. It tells us we have 1.25 moles of C in 2.50 liters 
or a 2.50 liter container. When we put this in our calculator, we are going to end up with 0 0.500 molar. So here is our initial concentrations of substance A, B, and C. So now what we need to do is we need to write our, our expression, right, our Q expression to figure out how we're going to solve this problem. So in step two here, we are going to find Q. So we know that Q is going to equal the initial concentration of C or our products. In this case, we only have one product. So Q is going to equal the initial concentration of C raised to the second power, because there's a coefficient of two here, divided by the initial concentrations of our products, or our, I'm sorry, of our reactants. And we only have two reactants here. So the initial concentration of A times the initial concentration of B. So we know these values, so we can just plug them in. C is right here. The initial concentration of C is 0 0.500. And we can go ahead and leave the units out when we're calculating our Q value. Q typically has no units. We're going to square this, and then we're going to divide this by the initial concentration of A, which is 0 0.600, and then the initial concentration of B, which is 1.00. And when we put this in our calculator, 0 0.5 squared, and we divide this by 0 0.600 times 1, we are going to end up with a final answer of 0 0.417. So here is Q. Q is 0 0.417. So if we take a look here, KEQ, our equilibrium constant, is 5.7. Q is 0 0.417. And so we see here that Q is going to be less than KEQ, right? 0 0.417 is definitely less than 5.7. And so because of this, if we take a look, if we, if we take a number line here, and uh, this here represents Q, we can see if we start off at 0 right here, Q is right about here, 0 0.417. And KEQ is going to be way over here at 5.17. So if we take a look, the reaction here, is going to have to shift to the right to, e to, to reach equilibrium. It's going to have to shift to the right, and more products are going to have to be produced in order to reach equilibrium. So understand that, that, that relationship between Q and KEQ. Here is our equilibrium constant, but Q here, which was 0 0.417, tells us that the reaction is going to have to shift to the right and produce more products in order to reach equilibrium. So in this problem right here, in the second part, it says to determine which direction the chemical reaction will shift. The reaction will shift to the right in order to reach equilibrium. All right, let's take a look at another example. In this second example, it says the following initial concentrations of each chemical involved in the chemical reaction shown below are 2.0 molar CO2, 2.0 molar H2 gas, 0 0.75 molar carbon monoxide gas, and 0 0.75 molar water vapor. So we have a chemical equilibrium or a chemical reaction right here, and here it is. And we see that the KEQ, or equilibrium constant, is 2.5. It says right here to find the reaction quotient for the chemical reaction and determine which direction the chemical reaction will shift in order to reach equilibrium. And so what we're asked to calculate here is Q. And so to get Q, what we need to do here is take a look at our products. If we take a look, we have CO2. So we're going to take the concentration of CO2 the initial concentration of CO2 raised to the first power, since there's a coefficient of 1 here in our balanced chemical equation, times the initial concentration of H2 
raised to the first power since there's an imaginary one there. And then we're going to end up dividing this by the product of the concentrations of our reactants. If we take a look here, we have CO as our first reactant. So we're going to take the initial concentration of CO raised to the first power since uh, since there's a 1 as a coefficient here. And then we're going to take the concentration of H2O also raised to the first power right here since there's a coefficient of 1. And so to get our Q value, that is what we're going to do. And so if we take a look at the problem here, it tells us the concentrations already. We don't have to figure out the concentration. It tells us that the initial concentration of CO2 is 2.0 molar. It tells us the initial concentration of H2 is also 2.0 molar. It tells us the initial concentration of CO is 0 0.75 molar. And it tells us the initial concentration of H2O gas is equal to 0 0.75 molar. And so it's an important thing to point out that we're dealing with all gases here. And when we're plugging this into our Q uh, equation here, our reaction quotient equation, you can only plug in gases into your reaction quotient equation or uh, or concentrations of solutions. In other words, if you had something here that was a solid or a liquid, you would leave them out of your uh, your reaction quotient equation. And so now that we have the initial concentrations of these all set up and ready to go, what we can now do is plug them into our formula and solve the problem. So we're going to plug in chug here. What is the concentration of CO2 initially? It's 2.0. And we're going to leave the units off. We can typically leave the units off in these calculations since Q has no unit. Times the initial concentration of H2, which is also 2.0. And we're going to divide this by the concentration of CO initially, which is 0 0.75. And the concentration of H2O here, which is also 0 0.75, the initial concentration of H2O. And so when we put this in our calculator, we are going to end up with a Q value equal to 7.1. And so now that we have our Q value, what we can do is we can compare our Q value to our KEQ value. We're comparing the reaction quotient here to the uh, equilibrium constant. And so what we notice here is that in this scenario right here, Q is going to be greater than KEQ, right? We see here that 7.1 is clearly greater than 2.5. And so what does this mean? Well, whenever you have Q greater than KEQ, the reaction is going to favor the reactants, okay? The reaction is going to favor the reactants, and the reaction is going to shift to the left so that more reactants are produced. So understand that concept. Because Q is greater than KEQ, the reaction here is going to shift to the left. To achieve and reach equilibrium. And because there's a shift to the left, that means that more reactants are going to have to be produced in order for this chemical reaction right here to, uh, to reach equilibrium. So understand that concept. Understand the relationship between Q and KEQ, the reaction quotient and the equilibrium constant, and how they relate to one another. And so if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that's going to subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.